Hey everyone, my name is KJ and I'm the student pastor at the chapel. Welcome to another great house party. Right now, as you're watching this, there are other house parties meeting all over town with students just like you, growing in community, making new friends, and taking their relationship with Jesus to a new place. I'm so glad that you're here today. Our theme for the month of November is One Small Step, and we're unpacking this concept of faith. I hope you were able to attend Motion Night, but if you weren't, you can watch the message on our YouTube channel by going to youtube.com slash chapelstudentsmidlow, and you can find everything there. One of the things I shared was that biblical faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in Jesus Christ. I discussed how faith is different from belief because the Bible reminds us in James chapter 2 that even demons believe in Jesus, but they don't place their faith in him like we do. Faith is powerful. Jesus said in Matthew 17 that even a little bit of faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed, like a really tiny small thing, it has the power to do unimaginable things. Jesus encountered so many people throughout all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, who came to him with their needs, illnesses, and questions. And oftentimes he would tell them that their faith healed them. When Jesus said to certain people, your faith has made you well, or go in peace, your faith has healed you, he was saying that their faith, or their confidence in him, had been the means of their restoration. The power of Christ was what effected the cure, but his power was applied in connection with their faith. Christ acts on behalf of our faith. In Matthew 17, we read about a famous moment in the life of the disciples, specifically Peter. A few verses before this, Jesus had finished feeding thousands of people. You probably know that story. And he just sent the disciples off and told them he'd meet them on the other side of the lake a little bit later on, after he went off to pray and be alone for a while. We're going to pick up in verse 24, and it says this, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Now just pause for a moment. I feel like oftentimes Jesus instructs us to go out and do something that may seem difficult. Hey, go out on the other side of the lake. I'll meet you there later. And we're like, "Uh, what do we do? How do we do it without you? How do I do this thing you're calling me to do? I don't know. But just because it's difficult does not mean it's not the right thing to do or that we shouldn't have to obey him anymore. Faith goes hand in hand with obedience. Oftentimes it requires a lot of faith to do the harder thing because it's then that our trust and reliance on Jesus is really put to the test. Let's keep reading. So verse 28 says this, Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. And I love this. Verse 29, Yes, come, Jesus said. Sometimes when we pray big prayers, or sometimes we do pray big prayers, don't we? Big, bold prayers that push the boundaries of what we feel like is possible. And if you don't, if you don't pray big, bold prayers, let me encourage you, you should. Remember, his power is applied in connection to our faith. So here's a moment where Peter speaks up and now has to choose whether or not he's going to follow through on his ask. Peter gets a bad reputation sometimes for being the guy that speaks before he thinks But I'm always really impressed with Peter right here because his faith moved him to act. No one else spoke up, but he did. Sometimes we ask God, okay, God, show me what to do. If it's really you telling me to do this thing or that thing or go here or go there or talk to this person or to do this thing, 
then give me an opportunity or show me who to talk to at school about you or whatever it is. And then we don't follow up. Faith takes full commitment. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water toward Jesus. Can you imagine that moment? But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, the Bible says he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out, grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Can you imagine this moment, being Peter or being a disciple in the boat? Imagine what this must have looked like. It had to be so crazy looking. In a lot of ways, we're like Peter on the water. We've got a lot going on in our lives. The Holy Spirit may be leading you through some sort of trial or storm of your own. You may find yourself in a situation or scenario you've never experienced before. And your faith is being rocked in the hardest of ways. And suddenly, you feel like everything around you in life is spiraling out of control. And like Peter, maybe you've taken your eyes off of Jesus and you begin to feel yourself starting to sink. You had faith to step out. You had faith to get this far. But now it seems like all of a sudden, none of that matters anymore. The waves are too big. The wind is howling too loudly. You can't find your Savior anymore. Didn't he promise to never leave you? Give up on us? Where is Jesus when we need him the most right now, out in the middle of the wind and the waves? Students, be encouraged. It says in the Bible, right here, immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed him. He didn't let Peter drown. He was right there in the storm with him, holding on tightly to Peter. Without skipping a beat, Jesus was right there. And he's right here now with us too. The hands that created the universe, the hands that healed blind men, and the hands that hugged widows, and the hands that were nailed to the cross to die in your place are the same hands that reach for you to pull you up when you lack faith. When the storms of your life, and I know there are so many, seem like they just are so out of control, don't look at your situation, look at your Savior. The Bible tells us that Peter began to sink when he saw the winds and the waves. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Don't lose sight of your Savior. Don't look to the left or the right and see the waves or see the wind. Keep your gaze focused on Him. Don't get distracted by all that's going on. When you're out walking on the waves, taking one small step towards Jesus, He is the only thing that matters. The one who created the waves and the wind has the power to silence them. Have faith that Jesus is in control, and you can trust him completely. Students, I can promise you this. If the Lord has given you specific instructions and you stay faithful to them, he will carry you through it no matter how difficult he is. He will not abandon you. He's right there with you. And you can have faith that he will enable you to do every single thing you need to do. He is only good to us. Be sure to thank your leaders and host families for helping put tonight on for you. They love you. They care about you so much. They're the best. And don't miss the next motion night on Wednesday, December 8th. See you next time.